Okay, everybody, I am so excited today because Georgina Campbell is back on the show. She is now starring in Barbarian. We're going to be talking spoilers about the film in this interview, so please make sure you watch the film first. Georgina, how are you doing today? I'm good. It's so nice to see you again. Hello. Uh, yes, I, I'm honored <laughs> you're back. That means I guess I did okay the first time. Uh, Definitely. So, <laughs> first off, though, how crazy is it for you being in the center of a poster for a big studio film like this? Like, I literally see this Barbarian poster with you everywhere I go. So how, how surreal has that been for you? <laughs> it's been really weird. When I first saw, like, the poster design, my agent sent it to me. And I was like, oh, my God, how can I get one? How can I get one? Um, so I spent ages getting my agents to pester Disney to get me. <laughs> to get me one of the uh, posters. So I've got about 10 posters now. I don't know what I'm going to do with them all. Um, but no, it was so exciting. It's just so cool. Yeah, I wouldn't have ever imagined it. It's great. No, it's great. And it's great to see someone who is just long deserving of big roles like this and big exposure. Now, with the character of Tess Marshall, it's very interesting because this film is really blocked in a lot of different parts. And I just want to start from the beginning of the film too, because she's dropped into this like very modern situation of having a rental being double booked. Now the first half of the film is very more tame to me than the second half. So are you approaching it as a horror film in your head in that first half of the film? Or are you kind of looking at it differently? No, I think, well, I think the way it was written was that it was written to be like a kind of rom-com. Um, mm. So not that that was necessarily what Zach said. He didn't say come at it as a rom-com, but the way it was written was very much kind of like romantic comedy. But the fact that it's in the horror genre, like you don't have to work too hard to make it suddenly appear kind of sinister and especially having... Keith be played by Bill Skarsgård who everybody knows as being quite a sinister actor <laughs> like plays lots of roles um so it was just yeah we just got to kind of it was really lovely because it was a nice way to start out the film before everything goes absolutely insane and have these nice scenes with Bill and just kind of build their relationship and kind of create the like almost will they, won't they, it's like a meet cute, they end up in this place together, and um, I think it's fun, and then obviously you kind of get the horror, like, comes out of nowhere, really, it kind of smacks you over the head really fast. Yeah, and, and that's so interesting you mentioned the meet cute, because it definitely has those vibes, which I loved, and it's interesting, though, with Tess, you know, meeting Keith in the first half, not knowing him, it's a complete stranger to her, did you avoid even meeting with Bill prior to film? Like, how did you guys kind of plan that out? And how did you build such good chemistry as the film goes on? I, do you know what? We, me and Bill had met before. We both were on a TV series on Amazon called Soulmates. We were on different episodes, but our episodes were filmed um, consecutively. So we met very briefly at like a rap party and hung out. And then suddenly it was like, oh my God, this is so weird. Like, here we are working together. Um, and it was very sh short period of time, but Bill came in, Bill came in and we filmed the beginning of the film and then Justin came in. So it was very quick. And I think we just got lucky. I just, uh, chemistry is such a weird thing. It, it, it really has no rhyme or reason. <laughs> and we just really worked and we got on and, um, and it was written really well as well. So, and I just think we had fun with it and yeah, it just felt very easy. Um, so I, yeah, I'm glad that that chemistry worked between us. I mean, he's such a great actor, so he could probably have chemistry with like a plank of wood, but it was good. <laughs> no, no, don't sell yourself <laughs> short. Like it's, it's so impressive to see, like, I love seeing that so quickly, how two strangers, you guys can build that relationship so convincingly as this film was on. It's really brilliant. And I also wonder too, now just going to the middle part of this film, you're going from being in a two-hander to now a solo show in the middle. Does that become more daunting for you and even like lonely at times on set? Honestly, we filmed the film so fast <laughs> <laughs> that I don't think there were really kind of outstretched um, periods of time where I felt like I was alone. Um, it was, I was speaking to someone about it the other day and I didn't actually really notice that much being alone. I think especially because Zach was so hands-on, he was always very present and very much 
in the actor's corner and it was like a small production and everybody was kind of behind each other. Yeah. So I never felt particularly lonely or concerned. Um, so yeah, cause I suppose, you know, once you start getting down into the basement, there is lots of scenes where it's just me, but also, I mean, I, th I think for a lot of it, my boyfriend actually came and was on set a lot as well. So like in between takes, I'd just be sat with him having a chat. So I definitely didn't feel lonely. <laughs> Oh, that's good. So also too, it, it's impressive because in that solo performance you're having going through the basement and we're with you as an audience, it's also really good on your part, the physical performance of it. And I, I'm wondering how conscious of you of that, like, is it tough to pull off having the physical part and emotional part in those scenes and not feeling like silly or like, am, am I doing this exactly how you want without having a scene partner? Is that strange? Yeah, I think some of the the most the physical stuff that I suppose I noticed the most was stuff with the the lighting where we had to light and having to hold the camera the the phone at the right position and move the light and mm. be thinking about that as well as thinking about you know acting and the emotion and everything. Um, but once we'd kind of got that down, it became quite easy. Um, and I think it was just I think that first when we first go down the steps and there's lots of me yelling Keith like nonstop. And I remember when we first started filming that I kind of gave a few kind of lackluster Keiths and Zach was like, no, 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 this needs to be like the end of Blair Witch where she is screaming, where you think this person like could be dead. Like you need to like lose your shit. And then I kind of, as soon as he said that, I was like, all right, well, that's it. We've got to go for it. So <laughs> from then on, it was like balls to the wall, completely going for it. Um, and Zach was very helpful in kind of pushing that along, definitely. Yeah, and and when the, the movie, like you said, just goes insane territory mm -hmm. here. I, I'm wondering too, you're in these dark hallways and obviously it's brighter on set, but is it like claustrophobic? Because it seemed kind of tiny, the set. Like what kind of set were you in there? What did that feel like? Yeah, they built those halls, the the um, the, the kind of corridor, um, and they were very small. Everything got shut in. There were parts of it that could be taken out. Um, but really, it was it's interesting because when the camera and everyone is behind you, then obviously you can kind of get lost in it, and it's very claustrophobic and very dark and scary. But for the scenes where the camera's on your face, um, it's, you know, there's a camera guy, there's the boom operator, there's, you know, the guy doing the focus and everyone's kind of squeezing down this like hallway. Like it was kind of ridiculous, but um, it was very well designed. It looked amazing. It did. And it looked like you were <laughs> kind of having fun on set too, which is awesome. And, you know, it's crazy. Cause like, again, you just going back to what you were saying, the perfect thing with the mute, meet cute what I think blows people's mind is we get in that mindset and then the most terrifying character appears the mother. Um, was she as terrifying in person and what are you actually seeing on set with her? It was all practical, which was amazing. That was something that Zach uh -huh. told me right at the beginning that everything was gonna be practical because um, he's kind of really into those like old kind of 80s style horror films. Um, so, it, I mean, it was amazing. I think I, did I meet Matthew before? I can't remember when I met Matt. I think I met Matthew before. So I had this vision of, you know, Matthew's like a very good looking, sweet, nice person. And then seeing him suddenly being in the kind of mother, you know, the, all the prosthetics and everything, it was just completely different. Like you, you, they're just miles apart and his physicality and everything he did in the role was so good. And yeah, he was terrifying. You know, he's very tall as well and very kind of domineering and, um yeah those scenes were were really 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 terrifying but then you know you call cut and it's Matthew being like are oh, you all right how's it going <laughs> oh <laughs> okay because you're, you're also blowing my mind right now because I didn't even realize it was a man playing the mother so wow that's, oh well there you go that's, <laughs> that's that is a spoiler <laughs> yeah no I, wow that that's insane so also too this this movie does another 180 and introduces us to AJ which becomes now your scene partner with Justin Long so did you shoot your scenes with Justin in order after Bill and how was it working with Justin Long? Yeah, we did. So we shot everything with Justin first and then, um, I mean, with uh, Keith, with Bill first and then we uh, moved on and Justin came. And then some of it was kind of, you know, out of order the way it is when you film. Um, but it was, it was really great. I mean, he came in just as we'd kind of started getting to the, those really 
big pieces and everything starts going a bit crazy and the acting is really getting pushed up um and then it was interesting obviously because he kind of has a second act that I'm not in so mm. I kind of had a bit of time he did his stuff I was there for some of the stuff he was doing which was really exciting to watch and you know I think one of the first days he came in he was doing stuff in the Airbnb and I was there to watch it and it was just such a different tone and like really exciting to watch and he's just absolutely hilarious um and then we come together and it was really fun working with him he's you know obviously a really amazing actor and the character itself I think the first scene that we did is where we realized that Tess is still there in the pit and we see each other and it was just a brilliant scene and he was just so funny in that scene with his kind of like bewilderment at what the hell is going on and her having been there for you know weeks kind of trying to explain to him shut up and listen to me um yeah it was great yeah it was such a good scene and it's great (laughs) when you guys are together on screen and it's interesting just the character relationship because to me it feels like there's a lot of faith Tess has in AJ even to the point where she wants to save him and then he completely betrays her and pushes her off a freaking water tower. Yeah. So how do you think this will change Tess's views on men, people in general, just kind of going to like her character journey for me if you can. Yeah, I mean, it's so interesting. I hope it doesn't change her too much. I think, you know, Tess doesn't know AJ, so she doesn't know the kind of person that he is. And I think it's, you know, it's gallant to be trying to help people. Maybe she should, you know, look after herself a bit more in the future. Um, But I do think that moment where he throws her off the tower is kind of, you know, a big eye-opening moment. And then obviously you get Tess suddenly, you know, finally putting her foot down and saying, I'm not going to go back. Like, I'm done with this. I don't want to come back with you. Um, So I think by the end of the film, you get the idea that she's, ready to stand up for herself and ready to look after herself and not necessarily put men uh, in front of her own needs, which I think you kind of get like a little inkling of that with um, when she talks about her ex relationships and that she's kind of used to being in relationships with men where she's not necessarily being heard or she's not being treated well. And she kind of perseveres even though it might not be the best thing for her so I think she gets a a, like a girl power moment at the end (laughs) hell yeah yeah I like that connection to that point earlier in the film that's great and also I, I think everyone talks about this leaving the theater this moment which I thought was powerful and made me think a lot was the headspace of Tess that you know she's originally scared of the mother rightfully so but then the mother like saves her here and yeah is there any thought in this moment that of not shooting the gun at her was there a thought there in Tessa's mind to not do it I think it's you can see in that moment that it's painful and for her she's she's understanding mother a little bit more because I think at that point the audience knows more about mother really than necessarily she does we do get you know she does get a little bit um when they get uh you know they go off with the homeless guy (laughs) whose name in it I can't quite remember um and he kind of says you know she's a copy of a copy there's you know she's not the worst thing in there but actually AJ has a lot more information of what's been going down in that basement than Tess does um but I think yeah the fact that she saves her and then there's a very sweet tender moment that Matthew creates um but at the same time, you know, she is a monster. She's, a ma- she's been made to be a monster, but um, going back into that house with her is not going to be great. <laughs> no one wants no. to drink any more out of that milk bottle. So I think she makes the right choice at the end, but it's a sad choice. I, I totally agree. That's a, that's a great <laughs> answer too. And now it's interesting. We see Tess walk off. So could you see a sequel to Barbarian and have more story here with the character of Tess? I don't think so. I think Zach is not looking to do another one, which I think is smart. I think sometimes, you know, I think this is such a good, original, bizarre film that I think it would be hard to follow it and there would be a lot of pressure to follow it. And I think sometimes, you know, sometimes stories just need to stay one. You don't always need to have a prequel or a sequel. Sometimes it's, you know, it's almost special nowadays to get just one that people really enjoy and you leave it at that and leave them wanting more yeah 
I totally agree with that. And that, that's a great smart thought there too. And <laughs> I, I also, it's gotta be exciting for you too, that this is like really to me, one of the big kickoffs to this historic horror season we're having and barbarian just landing with audience and critics. So how does that feel to have such a positive response to this film you worked really hard on? And do you peek at all reviews reactions or do you kind of not even look at that? I mean, I really shouldn't, but I've been obsessed with this one. <laughs> I think because I really love the film and it's it, it's been something that's been on my mind, you know, from the moment we filmed it to kind of waiting for it to come out to, you know, speaking to Zach along the way and finding out how things are going on to finding out, you know, that Disney came on board and we're going to distribute it to finding out that it was going to be in cinemas across the US. And now it's, you know, it's about to go to cinemas in the UK, which is huge for me, you know, coming from there. Um, it's been this slow development of like, oh, I mean, it's going well behind the scenes. How is it going to do when it comes out? And I just don't think any of us really quite expected it to have the kind of response it's having and that it's like you know the critics like it and people like it and you know they get it and they love how weird and strange it is and you know having spoken to Zach and knowing that that was a big reason that people didn't want to make the film that that's the reason that people like the film it's just mm. it's just really lovely and also I was speaking to someone the other day and it almost like I mean very narcissistically but almost affirms your taste level and that you can look at something and go, I think this is actually going to be really good and do really well. That doesn't always work. But I think knowing, you know, reading this script and having, I had an immediate feeling of like excitement and like, oh my God, I have to be in this. This is going to be amazing. And then this be the reaction is just kind of like a lovely ending to the whole journey of getting into this film. Yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. And I love you say like, this is a brave movie. I think that's what people really respect about it. And it lands and it was a risk and it was rewarded, which is awesome. Now, the horror fans are going to, are a passionate fan base. They're going to fall in love with Georgina Campbell now. So can we get another, maybe a little tease for your horror project coming up? Lovely, dark and deep, if you can say anything about it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's so hard. I haven't heard that much about it recently. You know what it's like, you do it and then, the, you know, everyone goes off and the post happens and everything. Um, but it's a really beautiful film written by uh, Teresa Sutherland, who did uh, The Wind, which I thought was such a gorgeous film, an amazing kind of like horror drama. Um, and this is very similar. It's very much uh, a story about one person, which is my character. and. Um, following her I, I don't even know how much I'm meant to say because I don't know what is out there on the on the internet but she's basically kind of a park ranger whose uh, sister goes missing and then she kind of goes on this mission to find out exactly what happened to her sister and it ends up being that there's something kind of sinister going on in the in the forest <laughs> Um, yeah. So, yeah just saying sinister you got everyone in so sinister. <laughs> there you go. um everybody in the meantime obviously just keep going tell people about it watch barbarian in theaters now where georgina campbell stars as tess marshall she has a brilliant job per usual this is expected with georgina uh, thank georgina you so thank you for coming on again and i hope to talk to you in the future yeah definitely thank you so much for having me it's really lovely